and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to my review of the Marlowe Mora, a watch that is nearly kind of almost but not quite Scottish. Two of the three owners of the brand come from Scotland originally and the watch is named after Loch Mora, the deepest body of fresh water in the British Isles, let alone in Scotland. It even has a picture of Morag, the Loch Mora monster on the back. How Scottish do you want? Now, full disclosure, this watch was sent to me for free by Marlow. I don't have to return it. But I hope you realise by now that just because I get a free watch doesn't mean to say the watch gets a free ride. You may remember the Morar. I took it with me on my travels when I went on holiday to Indonesia last November, December. And I really wanted to give it an extended run. I wanted to like this watch. I wanted to love this watch because of all of those Scottish connections that I just mentioned but I just can't. Let's flip the camera, find out why. Well, I'm not complaining about the lack of packaging, that's for sure. There is a substantial box, one of the most substantial boxes that I've encountered on a $500 watch with plenty of bump on the inside and it even begins one box beyond that. There's a giant cardboard box so big I can't even fit it on my reviewing desk here. The experience starts from the inner side of that, talking about the spirit of the lock, the three years they spent designing it, etc, etc. I will give them credit, it's all biodegradable, all natural material. This is something I don't talk about enough. I get so much plastic delivered to me here in Sydney and it's good to see brands going environmentally responsible. I think the British brands are leading this, Christopher Ward also notably all cardboard packaging. But I do want to take issue with one thing before I get onto the watch. Lovely kind of instruction manual come brochure here, some beautiful shots of the watch telling you how pure a design this dive watch is. They really are leveraging off its dive watch credentials. Loch Mora, the deepest loch, three years to design it. Every inch of this watch has designed to be a dive watch to look after you. When the going gets tough, the going gets deep. And they talk at length about ISO certification. Over here, you see a spec sheet, 40 mil, Miota, blah, 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 designed to ISO 6425 1996 spec, although they admit early on in here that it isn't actually certified. And they really do leverage off of it. For example, the page where they're talking about Loom, here it is, the glow. ISO 6425, 6425, ISO, 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 five mentions on the one page, but it isn't actually certified. Now, I think that's a bit cheeky. I assume that it costs a chunk of money to get your watch certified, but if you're not prepared to pony up, you shouldn't really be talking about it as often as they have. Anyway, who knows how much more money that would have added to the overall cost of this watch. It is about 500 US dollars if you are based in the USA. If you're in the UK, it's gonna cost you about 500 quid. So not a particularly cheap watch, especially as it comes on a rubber strap and not a bracelet. I think there are some really nice details in this watch. It certainly has been designed. You can tell that much. It's not just a copy and paste or a factory job. They have tried to make something different, but I think there are also a couple of design elements that let it down and a couple of things that don't really stack up for this pure dive watch won't let you down ISO, 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 but it isn't really ISO certified. Anyway, 40 millimeters in diameter, 12.6 millimeters thick and a nicely compact 47 mil lug tip to lug tip. So it is a fairly small watch, all things considered. 20 millimeter lug width. On this supplied rubber strap, it weighs in at 107 grams. This is the SANS model. There are five different variants, all of them made of 316L stainless steel. They describe this as gunmetal plated 316L stainless steel. So stainless steel case, bezel, crown and screw down case back. 350 meters of claimed water resistance. It says 310 there, but uh, again, the brochure claims a little more than that. It says 350 meters, so you can make it all the way down to the bottom of Loch Mara, where you may or may not find Morag. Yes, indeed, I think jealous of Nessie and the tourist dollars that flock to the banks of Loch Ness. Who knows whether the plucky locals of Loch Mara invented Morag a number of years ago to try and drum up a little bit of tourism, a little bit of interest to their own deep water loch but there she is in all her glory in a very attractive etched screw down case back 
Perhaps you spotted it from the card earlier on. This watch features a Miyota 9039. That is the no date specific version of the Miyota 9000 series movement. 24 joule hacking and hand winding high beat auto. That is to say that you get 28,800 vibrations per hour. So eight ticks of the second hand per second. Seat an accuracy of about minus 15 to plus 20. This one running at plus six seconds per day. That's kind of what I get normally from these Miotas somewhere between zero and plus 10, reasonable amplitude and a healthy minimal beat error. And the distressed coating on the steel, I think looks really good. It certainly looks like it's been designed with this in mind. It wasn't an afterthought or something. And that crown is fantastic. Seven mil crown, really, really easy to grip. Semi shrouded, semi guarded, but you should have no problems screwing or screwing this one even with gloves on if you do intend to take this watch diving. Likewise, the bezel, unusual here, one piece metal bezel etched in a kind of turbine pattern. The rationale is that you're not going to rub this one the wrong way. It does take a little bit of effort, a little bit of effort to, to twist it round. If you are on a dive, it's not gonna catch on clothing or something and move. So 120 click unidirectional. The bezel is actually really very nice. No back plane, no bounce locks into place and has a, a very positive and sneaky action. Let's get some macro shots of the bezel as well from the top. As you can see there, no aluminium or ceramic insert. It's deep etched and I think, again, it looks great. Kind of steampunky vibe, the distressed coating, the deep etching, the metal on metal look, very attractive. Though again, I'm not sure how legible this watch would actually be if you were at the bottom of a loch. Those one to 15 indents, they're gonna be there forever no matter what you do with this watch, but at arm's length in a dark environment, I'm not sure you'd be able to spot them all that easily. Covering the dial is a big thick piece of flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective undercoating, again, helping it achieve that water resistance rating. 310 on the dial, 310 meters on the back, that's the depth of Loch Morar, as I mentioned. So Marlow Watch Company just printed on there underneath the index at 12. The indices apparently designed after shells. They look kind of somewhere between diamonds and heart shapes. Not seen anything like that before, so certainly again, they're not trying to replicate the design from anything else with this one. Reho chapter ring in a kind of complementary blue here, all nicely fitted, nicely aligned, minute track on there, nice and easy to read. That rough textured pattern on the case carries over to the dial. But then there's the handset. Again, there's a page in the brochure telling you how the handset was designed to be immediately legible, and perhaps they are, but they're also a little bit brutal to say the least. Lollipop second hand with a counterbalance is a little bit more rounded, but the damage has been done by those two brutal looking rectangular hour and minute hands, I'm afraid. There's plenty of lume on them. I assume this is BGW9 Superluminova and C3. I complained before about the two-tone look. I'm not a big fan of it. Again, the brochure justifies it by saying it's easy to identify which hand is which at a glance if you are in the murky depths, but as discussed, that doesn't really go with the not very legible bezel, in my humble opinion. The loom, I have to say though, is pretty good. On wrist, it wears nicely, super comfortable, soft silicone strap. That's still a little bit of Indonesian sand and salt in there from my holidays, I'm afraid. Sorry about that, but I can't help but wish it was bigger. You really don't hear me say that all that often on this channel, but I would love this watch to be 42 or 43 mil. Again, if it's supposed to be a pure diver, bigger is better in terms of legibility anyway. It's a small watch at 40 and it wears like a small watch. Still nice and legible on the proper overhead shot there though. Those hands with the trimmed edges, the different colored edges do make it stand out against the texture dial. And outside, still no problem reading this one even in bright sunlight, which is where I suspect this watch is gonna spend most of its time anyway, rather than the murky depths of a loch. There's a decent amount of anti-reflective coating on the glass, making sure that you can still see the dial, even in this bright light. On wrist, those almost kind of vintage style downward sloping lugs make a good job of keeping this one sitting nice and snug to my wrist. But I'm afraid overall the Marlow Morar just doesn't work for me as a package. Those nice curved shell-inspired indices adding softness to the dial, 
but immediately those brutal squared off angular rectangular hands taking back any of that softness. And if you are going to make an out and out dive watch and talk about it at length, that bezel I think should have been more clearly defined. Perhaps they could have loom filled these etchings rather than just leaving them as they were. They could have made the watch a bit bigger at 42, 43, and they could have actually got it ISO certified rather than just talking about it at length, but not actually putting the watch through the certification process. 500 US dollars also isn't that cheap for a watch with a Miyota 9000 on a rubber strap. I'm sure it will find its fans though. That gunmetal coating on here really does look pretty good straight out the box anyway. And not everybody wants to wear a 42mm 43, I appreciate, but it just didn't work overall for me, I'm afraid. So there you have it, the Marlow Morar, a watch that I wanted to love, but I just could not connect with this one at all, I'm afraid. That handset, I cannot think of another handset more brutal on any watch. It's a lovely round watch with those lovely diamond cum heart shape indices. Why did they put such slab sided rectangular brutalist hands on it? I'll never know. And the price, depending on where you are in the world, can go from a little bit expensive to really quite expensive, especially considering it's on a rubber strap and not a bracelet, and it's got a Miyota 9000 as opposed to a Swiss made movement in it. I wanted to love it, but I just couldn't. Thanks for watching. See you in the next vid.